Today we want to talk about the male reproductive system. There will be two parts. The first part has to do with spermatogenesis, identifying the different uh, spermatogenic cells, uh, and also look at the endocrine aspect of it. The second part has to do with uh, excurrent ducts uh, and secretory glands of the male reproductive system. Thank you. Male Reproductive System, Part 2, Excurrent Ducts. We want to identify and distinguish among the different parts of the excurrent duct and the secretory glands. We also want to describe the structure of the penis and how it becomes erect. Uh, we will, the outline we will follow will start out with the secretions into the duct, pathway of the duct, epidermal maturation sperm, and followed by characteristics of a fertile ejaculate, erection mechanisms, and a clinical correlation. Remember in part one, we said that testosterone is produced by the Leydig cells. And here we see Leydig cells between the center for tubules. There are different profiles of Leydig cells that produce testosterone. And testosterone is important in maintaining secondary sex characteristics epithelial height. And here we see the, the seminal vesicles, and this is a typical height of epithelium with secretions above the nucleus. If you would castrate the individual, uh, they would go to a basal layer without the secretions at the top. And then if you have replacement therapy for a castrate, you will return the secretions, uh, uh, not quite to the intact level, but you will return the secretions uh, in these uh, cells and also the height of the epithelium. So the hormonal uh, is important uh, in maintaining the secondary sex characteristics uh, of the male. Now, what are the uh, secretions of these glands? Uh, well, we the seminal vesicles produce fructose. Fructose is a guaranteed energy source because other cells, that is the cells in the male reproductive tract and also the cells in the female reproductive tract, cannot use fructose. They can use glucose. So if the seminal vesicles produce glucose, it would be hard to maintain an energy source. Fructose, no problem, because only the sperm and not the other cells could use it. Also, uh, fibrinogen is produced by the seminal vesicles to plug up the system to prevent the sperm from falling out. The prostate uh, produces citrate and fibrinolysin, which will uh, dissolve the plug uh, after a time and cause the sperm in the human ejaculate, which will solidify immediately after a collection. It will uh, liquefy that semen over a period of a little time with the fibrinolysin. Also, the vulvo-urethral gland and mucus-like secretions and the glands of the tray is in the uh, edge of the urethra and make produce a, a little mucus. The bulbo urethra gland uh, is a pre-ejaculate uh, uh, sperm, uh, pre-ejaculate secretions. Here we see the accessory uh, organs. I've got the testis, the epididymis, uh, the vesicles, the ampulla coming in, prostate, uh, bulbo urethral glands uh, right in uh, through there. Uh, and here we see uh, the penile urethra, the prostatic urethra, the jacatory ducts right in through there, and the seminal vesicles uh, with the different uh, parts as noted here in our textbook. Um, and also, one of those glands is the bulbo urethra gland you see here in green, and that discharges into the penile urethra, uh, which uh, cleans out the urine before the ejaculation process. And this fluid. Um, is, uh, is, is you stretch it. It's really interesting fluid. You can stretch the fluid with a uh, pair of tweezers. Use it fluid is not stretchable, but it is in this case. Uh, also, there's no real uh, space here for secretions to go. So whenever uh, the muscle is contracted associated with erection, uh, what happens uh, uh, is it squeezes the uh, issues coronosis muscles, squeezes uh, this gland and the secretions ooze out before ejaculation occurs. And here we see the prostate. This is the the, uh, the secretions of the prostate, and then there's also a lot of connective tissue uh, in between there. There's urethra uh, right in through there with, with glands coming in through. 
Now, of the slide that we have today, 96, we can see the urethra uh, in the prostate. Uh, we can see the ejaculatory ducts radiating through there. Uh, and we can see the main secretions. So the main secretions, as we see, that ends up in the ducts, and then the ducts run through the middle region uh, in through here, which is mostly the ducts, but there are also some glands in through there. So we basically have uh, an outer region, a middle region, and a region where you have um, the urethra and the jacatory ducts. So here we see the prostate, there are a lot of connective tissue in through there with the secretions. You can see the height of the epithelium, it's kind of columnar cells that are there. It looks like there are more than one layer of cells. Uh, and here we can see uh, those cells. It has a lot of rough endoplasmic reticulum and secretions there, gap junctions between adjacent cells to keep the, the contents uh, inside there. Here on 96, we can see the prostate uh, with the, the tubular alveolar secretory units of the prostate secretions. You can see the duct, prostatic ducts that are there that are moving through the middle region. Uh, and also, uh, there are nerves and even ganglia. And you can see the nucleus there with the snake eye uh, in the uh, nerve cell there. And uh, satellite cells around the outside to support that. So again, with uh, 96, we can see the chakratory ducts, uh, uh, utricle in through here, and the urethra, as well as stroma and some ducts coming in uh, from the prostatic secretions. So basically, there's three regions. You have the region uh, directly around uh, the prostatic urethra, and that's your transitional region. Then you have the central region in through there. And then you have the peripheral region, and that's basically what we saw before. The peripheral region is secretion. Uh, uh, the central region is where you have mostly duct, but you can have some glands in through there. And then you have uh, uh, the prostatic urethra region in through there. Uh, when it advances in age, uh, some of the secretions become concretions. So these are concretions that are located uh, in, this, in the uh, secretory space of uh, the prostatic duct associated uh, with aging. So in the male reproductive tract, we see the cinema vascos, the prostate, the ejaculatory duct coming in here, uh, the urethra joins uh, from the bladder, uh, comes in through there, and then you have the penile urethra uh, taking things out. And here we see the cinema vascos. Cinema vascos kind of honeycomb shape, as you can see, with simple columnar cells located there. Also in this slide, 95, you can see the ureter uh, and see a little bit the longitudinal view of the ductus deferens as well. So in a single vesicle, honeycomb shape, as you see, a muscularis external on the outside, uh, columnar epithelium uh, located there, uh, lambda appropriate adventitia on the outside. Here we see it of the monkey, uh, and we can see uh, honeycomb type shape uh, in the in the sigma vesicles, uh, simple columnar epithelium, uh, and you can see those cells with uh, a lots of rough endoplasmic reticulum uh, located there. And as I mentioned before, the height of these cells is dependent upon uh, testosterone, which is produced by the Leydig cells in the testis. Now, the functional properties of the accessory glands uh, could be ascertained by obtaining sperm or the ejaculate from uh, from uh, the men. And the ejaculation is not all in one uh, uh, ejection. Uh, it actually comes out in little, little squirts. Uh, and the first, if you uh, uh, fractionated the ejaculate, the first portions that come out uh, has most of the citrate, which means it comes from the prostate, and most of the sperm, which means it comes from the ductus deferens. Uh, the, the last part comes from, has a fructose in it, fructose in it meaning it comes from the simple vesicles. So you can see that the uh, citrate, which would be the buffer, would mix with the sperm, be the first thing out, uh, and then uh, you have a simple vesicles kind of plug uh, the thing that depend upon uh, antigen, as we mentioned to you before. So in terms of of the excurrent duct itself. We've got the seminary tubules, you've got the reedy testis, you've got the efferent ducts, the ductus epididymis, um, and then the, the ductus deferens, and here's the spermatic cord, 
and here we see this romantic cord with the blood vessels in through there and there and there's the tunic I beginning reflected back and so uh, we have seven tubules uh, produce sperm and then the sperm go through the through the reedy testis and here you can see where some of tubule lumen uh, and through there and continuous with the reedy testis so this is the reedy testis tubules in here simple columnar epithelium simple cuboidal uh, to columnar epithelium that we see there uh, some of tubules you can see the tubule here uh, giving rise and going right into uh, uh, into the uh, reedy testis uh, tubules uh, there. So the efferent from the reedy test tube because of the efferent ducts, several efferent ducts, and here we see the efferent ducts they vary in height, and so they have a scalloped uh, appearance of these. And these cells are the counterpart to the oviduct or the uterine tube, uh, in that they have true ciliated cells. Here we see the ciliated cells in a uh, in the efferent ducts of a horse. Some columnar epithelial cells with cilium uh, on the surface, and that's what we have here. Uh, in the human, a uh, varied heights, scalloped appearance of the efferent duct as opposed to the ductus epididymis. And with lots of sperm here. So we have uh, true cilia on the efferent ducts, uh, but you have stereocilia, which is very, very long microvilli, non motile uh, projections off of the uh, epididymis, simple columnar epididymis. It's actually stratified, pseudostratified columnars. Look, look, uh, pseudostratified, you see some basal cells and some. Uh, uh, columnar cells as well. So uh, in the head of the epididymis, we see the efferent ducts uh, and the uh, uh, and the ductus epididymis veins in through their nerves, smooth muscle. Uh, in the beginning, you have a little bit of smooth muscle, and then as you go through the excrement ducts, the epididymis, you will increase the amount of muscle. And also, as you go through the epididymis, uh, sperm become fertile; uh, they become motile. Uh, and you have the nature of the plasma membranes modified. The chromatin is stabilized, uh, uh, as well as uh, mitochondrial uh, stabilization. And this is both of these are due to disulfide bond uh, formation. So we have the testis and the uh, efferent ducts epididymis, and there we see several sections of the epididymis in, in slide 93. Again, we can see there's lots of sperm in through there, with some extra cells in there as well. But most of these are sperm, and then these are uh, pseudostratified by columnar epithelium with, with uh, stereocilia on the surface. You can see very, very long stereocilia, non modal, uh, and then some smooth muscle around the outside. If we look at the ultrastructure features, we can see the stereocilia, very, very long microvilli, and some of which are branched. Um, Sometimes we can see a swirl of smooth ER. What's it in there? I don't know. A uh, nice nucleus, but a characteristic of the epididymis is they have a lot of Golgi apparatuses. You can see all the little hands here are Golgi uh, apparatuses. What they're doing there, we don't know uh, for sure. Real long mitochondria, which is probably associated with absorption of thing. Uh, another EM, the EM2, uh, the very long uh, microvilli, which are the stereocilia. In summary, as you go from the center of the tubule to the reedy testis tubule to the, you can see the transformation from the tubule uh, to the reedy testis tubule, center of the tubule, reedy testis tubule, from the reedy testis tubule to the efferent ducts, efferent ducts to the epididymis. As you go through the epididymis, you increase the amount uh, of smooth muscle, as you see there. In fact, when you get uh, at the tail of the epididymis, there is a lot of smooth muscle uh, in preparation to uh, it being joined to the ductus deferens, which has a lot of muscle. You see the stereocilia. Usually the stereocilia shortens somewhat, uh, and maybe the cell height shortens a little bit as it goes through the epididymis. So maturation of sperm, what happened to sperm here? We see the human sperm here and here. Uh, modified the DNA protein complex, disulfide bonds are formed. It stabilizes the energy. Uh, transfer to for motility, uh, develop surface mass for prolonged survival in the female reproductive tract. Of course, the female reproductive tract is going to see the sperm as far. Macrophage is ultimately going to eat up most of them. <coughs> and if you can mask it for a while, you might be able to get to the egg before the immune system uh, uh, gets rid of them. And develop uh, multiple binding sites for the sperm. So these are some of the 
characteristics of sperm as they go through the epididymis. Now, what are the characteristics of a fertile ejaculate in humans? You have to have a certain number of sperm. One's not enough. I usually need about 20 millions per meal. And you have to have a certain morphology. Here we can see a normal sperm. There's two heads, two tails, microcephalic, coil tail, broken tail, pear shape, bent tail, macrocephalic. Uh, and these are, are uh, abnormal forms. And this is a normal one. You should have about 80% normal form. There also should be viscous, that is clot, and then disperse after a time. And it needs about three mils in volume. And three mils in volume is necessary to uh, increase uh, the the pH. Uh, I'm sorry, to decrease, yeah, to increase the pH uh, in the female reproductive tract. She should be producing lactic acid, which is more acidic, uh, to bring the pH more comparable to what sperm like. You need to have a certain volume of buffer there, and that citrate is going to do that. Now, spermatogenesis and epithelial maturation of sperm continues regardless of ejaculation frequency. So, where do the unejaculated sperm go? Sperm appears in the urine after several days, seven to eight days of sexual rest. So, if the male does not ejaculate, sperm will start appearing uh, in the urine. This is a 24-hour urine sample, the number of sperm that appeared in the urine uh, after about a week. Auto uh, nocturnal uh, emissions is another uh, possible source of sperm if you don't have um, planned ejaculations uh, to occur. Uh, the ductus deferens, as you uh, increase, uh, you have different layers, the inner circular layer, uh, uh, different layers. You've got the uh, longitudinal uh, outer layer, uh, circular layer in the middle, uh, thinner layer, different layers of muscle, uh, and mucosa, which is the epithelium and the lamina propria and through there as we can see there there are several nerves um, in the connective tissue around through there and also the nerves which will penetrate in through their control to coordinate the contractions uh, of this moving muscle here we see the ductus deferens quite large in the em45 uh, uh, very large uh, different uh, muscle layers as you see there Here's a ductus deferens that we were talking about. Um, under sympathetic control, um, the uh, muscularis externa uh, uh, of the ductus deferens uh, produce strong uh, contractions uh, during ejaculation, which rapidly moves the sperm from the epididymis uh, to the ejaculatory duct in just in time. Uh, actually, if it moves it up there and the ejaculation doesn't occur, it actually moves it back into the epididymis for, for storage in a more cooling uh, location. There's skeletal muscle in the spermatic cord. We can see it right here, but there's also a lot of smooth muscle around this ductus deferens, and there's blood vessels and lymphatics, arteries, veins, and lymphatics located in through there. Here we can see the spermatic cord, artery, vein, and we can see a valve uh, in one of those uh, veins. There's nerves, big nerves in through there, and ductus deferens and you can see the ductus deferens had a big layer of, of, of smooth muscle one two three different layers uh, and uh, admin tissue as well again we can see it large uh, uh, nerves out through there with the uh, ductus deferens lots of smooth muscle uh, uh, longitudinal and circular muscle that we see there one two three uh, different layers uh, in the epithelium on the surface. And then that brings us to the penis. Um, and here you read the penourethra, so that's continuing uh, from the prostate to the penourethra. And then we have these two uh, carvanosis uh, cavities, uh, these two here, and one that surrounds uh, the, uh, uh, the urethra itself uh, to hold it uh, open uh, during erection to occur. So we have the, uh, uh, the corpus carbonosum uh, in through here. There's one, two of them. Here's the tunic abigenia around through there, which resist the, the, the pressure. You increase the, the blood in through there, increase the pressure, and this re present the uh, additional expanding through, so uh, cause the erection to occur. 
and then the corpus spongiosum, which holds the, uh, prevents the uh, urethra from collapsing during the process. As you see, thin skin in through there, a lot of connective tissue uh, around the penis. A higher magnet, uh, corpus uh, carbonosum, and then of course a spongiosum with the the urethra. We look at the urethra as transitional epithelium, but it could be other types as well. And also, right in the edge, I don't see it there, but right in the edge where we get the uh, glands of Latre, which produces a little mucus. Uh, in the monkey, monkey, the penis is a little bit different. It's a corpus uh, spongiosa here, uh, tunic albigenia there. Uh, here's the urethra that we can see uh, as well. So in terms of the mechanism of erection, you got these two uh, cavities uh, that fill with blood and you got a spongy one that's around the urethra to keep it open. Uh, it's your arteries uh, change their flow, they dilate or contract and that's what regulates uh, erection uh, largely. And here we can see the placid penis and the erect penis uh, whenever uh, these cavities are filled uh, with, with blood. Um, during sexual uh, arousal, the increased activity in anatomic nerves stimulate um, the release of uh, neurotransmitters and nerve endings of the carbonosis body and the endothelial cell. This leads to nitrous oxide, nitrous oxide, which is strong, smooth muscle relaxant. So the arteries wall uh, contract, um, they uh, relax. Whenever they relax, they dilate and you get uh, blood flowing into the carbonosis tissue. In doing so, you inhibit the outflow of the veins. Um, uh, and then more of the contraction of the estrous carbonosis muscle stabilizes the base of the penis. Uh, and when it contracts, the tunic at the beginning around the carbonosis tissue prevents uh, it from expanding further, uh, and that causes the erection to occur. Uh, the key factor in effective erection connection is the blood flow. That's why you see in the Viagra and a different uh, advertisement, they say it's just a matter of blood flow. Of course, it's a matter of blood flow. You have to have blood into uh, the penis, a dilation of that uh, muscle uh, to be able to, um, to have maximum um, flow of blood uh, inside there, which is stabilized by the contraction of the carbonosis. Um, uh, muscle that we can see. So uh, coronary disease, hypertension, different things will lead to a problem with erection because uh, indeed um, uh, blood flow is very important in regulation of erection. So we talked about the, the testis, the epididymis, uh, ductus deferens, uh, and accessory glands. Uh, now, in our clinical correlations, we have infertile patient, which also had respiratory infections. Uh, and basically what happens is uh, he his microtubules does not have the dining arms. These dining arms that we see here, this make that doublet interact with this doublet. And you can see the dining arms are missing uh, in the uh, cretaginal uh, patient that you can, you can see. And so uh, without... Uh, the dining arms, the sperm are non-mobile, and so they can fertilize the egg if they couldn't get to the right place or can uh, complete the fertilization itself. Also, uh, the cilium uh, in the nasal cavity uh, require a dining arms uh, too, and if they don't have the dining arms, then they're not mobile, and so you don't have a cleaning out, a natural way of cleaning out the respiratory system. Uh, and it would induce a person not to cough uh, to clean the mucus out. And if you don't clean it out routinely, uh, then uh, you can have repeating uh, infections. So I just want to thank the many um, groups uh, which have uh, provided uh, illustrations that were modified for this, uh, for this presentation. That's the end of the male reproductive system to uh, X-Current Ducks.